Loki stood and observed Steve quizzically. Steve knew himself to be a poor enough liar by now that he understood the best approach was to say nothing and allow Loki to draw his own conclusions. Oh, feel free to gloat, Captain. After all, that's what this zoo is for, so that everyone in the Nine Realms might observe what happens when one dares to upset the natural order of things and seize power for himself. That way, they can all sleep easy, basking in the knowledge that everything complicated has a simple answer. Might makes right, and they are fortunate enough to be both. So, therefore, why even bother questioning authority? Is that all you think you did? Question authority? As opposed to overthrowing it? Trust me, Captain. Even as we speak, there is something out there that is headed straight towards that little mud ball of yours that you call the planet. Oh, it may not arrive tomorrow or next year or the year after, but rest assured, it is coming. And when he arrives, you're going to wish that I was in charge of your world, because I was the only chance any of you had that he might ignore you. But I guarantee that you have his full attention now. As do I, I'm afraid. You see, the Battle of New York was just the beginning, Captain. And in winning that battle, you've already lost the war. Steve studied Loki for a moment. He still seemed the same. He couldn't blame Thor for wanting to believe his brother had the potential to be better than this but he also had a hard time seeing it for himself. And yet, Thor had told him that Loki's final act had been one of nobility and sacrifice. Duplicitous, yes, but for a good purpose. So no matter what Steve thought he saw in Loki, the fact was that Loki had already proven him wrong in the future. 